All right, compositing our landscape. So we introduced this project in the last video. And when we actually go to the assignment, which is after question of the day one, after past instructors and student examples. So I call this unit four and then A, B, C, D. So this is the last thing. It's the thing where three points do September 18th. Next class. So today's our working day. It gives you a pretty thorough description of the assignment, right? The things needed to meet all the requirements. You need to composite five different, at least five different found reference images and blend them together to form a believable landscape. So think of the term fantasy in quotes and try to conceptualize your ideas to fit that term. So that doesn't mean it has to be Lord of the Rings kind of literature fantasy genre. It's just an imagined landscape. Any sort of environment, natural, urban, past, future, alien, or familiar. It should be a setting that has no people, animals, working vehicles, or other figurative content like flames or smoke, you know, that you could have settled fog, but nothing you would expect to be moving because we'll be adding such things later with an option to animate this landscape. Each reference image you use needs to be high enough pixel resolution so that it can be printed. So that's going to be at least a thousand pixels in its smallest dimension. And you can use large in the tools for Google Images. And you often want the largest possible raster option from Pixabay. So here's a reminder that Pixabay is my preferred place for you to get image reference for your projects. Not only are all the images large enough, in fact, their home screen is featuring landscapes right now, but if I look up church ruins, I'm going to get 574 images that are large enough resolution and that are royalty free. So the license of Pixabay is like a Creative Commons license. So if I see some ruins I think would be really useful, I'll right click and I'll say open link in new tab. And that's a nice trick to right click and open link in new tab. That way you don't lose your search and you can open multiples and then go through them because they're in new tabs. And then you say download and I would just pick the largest one, but in order to do the largest one, you have to have an account, which is free. You just use an email. And if you're having trouble using an email, you don't want to have to log in. You can upload right up to the highest level, right, without an account. And those are still more than a thousand pixels in each dimension. So these are high quality references. Let's understand what their content license is because they call it a Pixabay license. A Creative Commons open license, a CCO license, would mean you can use it for anything. It's basically the same as a public domain. This is like a CCO, except that you cannot do these things. You cannot just use it on a standalone basis, which means they ask you not to take the exact image and just use it in the exact same way because no creative effort then has been used. It can't contain any recognizable trademarks, logos, or brands. And that's because sometimes photos get through on Pixabay, even though they go through a curation of users. Not everyone has a full knowledge of copyright, right? So they're just looking at the image quality, not if it has a McDonald's sign in the background. If it has a McDonald's sign in the background, the problem is that's a registered trademark. And so that, that image is not allowed for use. So it's just reminding you, do not use anything that has trademarks, logos, or brands uh, if you're going to sell this and use this for commercial reasons. As a student under educational fair use, you don't need to worry about it. You cannot use content with any Im in any immoral or illegal way, right? Especially content which features recognizable people. So this is worried about, you know, deep fakes, things like that. And you cannot use content in a misleading or deceptive way. That's a really, really vague prohibition. But because we are trying to deceive the audience into thinking that these are believable landscapes, right? So 
in a way, art is always deceptive and misleading. <laughs> but my job is to take this image and then transform it into my own thing. I can't just use it as it is. And then to meet the assignment parameters, I can't just use this as it is and then like plop three different bushes in it or four different bushes and just keep this composition. So that's why the sketching is really important. So when I sketch for this, this is the first thing you want to post, just like you see in the examples here, a planning sketch that uses at least five references. I'm thinking of the things I want to search for. So church ruins is one. Here's another one. I like those arches. Download. Great, then we can close these. You don't need to donate to the authors unless you're very big hearted. And then I can look up jungle trees. And I get 1700 results, right? So maybe I want to limit these a little bit. Maybe I want to limit it to roots, jungle tree roots. Ah, and then I get the good stuff from Cambodia, Angkor Wat, these temple ruins, and then some fashion shoots that took place in there. And so I start to save some of these. Like, this is beautiful. So I open the link in a new tab. I look for the, I look at it, looks good. I don't need to zoom in because this is Pixabay. They're not going to have watermarks. They're going to be clean. I don't need to donate. I don't need to look at the artist because I know what the license is. So, when I download, where do they go? They go to our downloads folder. So I also downloaded some carnivorous plants, some swamp jungle stuff. So now I'm gonna take all of these and I'm gonna add them to, you can just put them to your desktop, but then I recommend you make a folder and you call that folder references. And I've nested that folder now into a My Assignment 1 folder. And then you go through them. Notice I have a lot more than five. And you're just thinking, even before you sketch, look at all these great references, all from Pixabay. So I don't need to worry about watermarks. They're all huge. They all have pretty good focus. And lighting, there are little things that would need to be covered up and removed. You know, I'm just going to be using parts of them. I love this as a foreground element. These weird little rocks. Kind of leading into something else. Kind of spooky. And then this was on Pixabay 2 under Jungle. This is a digital composite. It's a wallpaper that someone created. And I'm not going to be using any of this. But I really like, like it as inspiration. The way the light's coming through. And maybe this actually could be a far background element, maybe, for me. So just lots and lots. Sometimes there are roots. This isn't really jungle roots, because this looks more like a, a pine forest. This is cool. I love this part, but it's got a lot of like a modern electrical stuff in it, so that might not be the best. These carnivorous plants. This one has really weird lighting, which might work for what I'm doing. Not sure. This one has more straightforward lighting. So think of time of day. I have stuff from Chichen Itza and the Mayans. I've got more carnivorous plants in the foreground. So some are better than others, right? The ones that I'm most excited about using, I'll mark as green. So I have those marked. And then sometimes, let's look at the last thing on my sketch. or one of the last things, large boulders. Check this out. If I look up large boulders in Pixabay, not too many search terms, right? You'll sometimes get assets. There's only one page. There's only 17 images. And a lot of them are just of large boulders. You know, they don't necessarily look like they belong in a swamp, though this one's pretty nice. But then you'll also get things like this. So let me save this one quick. God, these are huge, huge images. Now, this has a waterfall in it, and so that is kind of a, a figurative moving thing. It depends how I would use it. But if I look at these, these are kind of ready-made assets. 
particularly for compositing. So if I download these at high resolution, they're already all cut out for us. They're like pre-made. You can buy collage books that are actually stickers. You know, that's kind of what this is as a digital asset. Makes it really, really easy. So I'll grab that one. Yes, bless you. And then I'll grab this one. And as long as they're over a thousand by a thousand, you're good. You don't want any images for this assignment that have any dimension less than a thousand. And the bigger, the better. All right. So I'm going to move those into my folder. You can just do this folder right on the desktop. And then I'm going to show you how I sketch with them. Even though I've already posted my sketch. Because your sketch does not need to be all that complicated. Come on, downloads. There you go. These, here we go. All right. So some boulders that could be useful. I'm going to go ahead and mark these green. I also found an asset for Gothic ruins. So it's already cut out. So I've got some good stuff. And I have more than five. So this is what I do. I take that folder. Instead of just leaving them all scattered on the desktop, I put the references in a folder. This is very helpful. We turn the folder into our design board which is like in a design studio, you have like a cork board up on the wall and you just put a lot of your inspiration images up there, right? This might be for video game, for concept art, for animation, for feature films, for special effects. So to turn your folder into a design board, you need, you need to change your view options on a Mac. So you click on these three little dots here, you go to view options, and then you just make your icon size bigger so you can see them all. Depends how good your eyes are. I like these big monitors. And then you can collapse the grid spacing between them so you can fit more on there. So now I can see them all and I can see my preferred ones. I can even group them, not by name, but by tags. And that will group all the colors together. So these are my preferred ones. And these are good ones to sketch off of, right? So if I take this image, Save that image. I'll just move it to the desktop. And then I'm going to open up that image, that sketch in Photoshop. So once you have a sketch, and I recommended you sketch it by hand, this I sketched just on the whiteboard in class. Then I want you to take a photograph of that. That's called image acquisition, right? It's going to be a raster image. And then I want you to email yourself that photograph or upload it to Google Photos like I did for mine so that I could download it onto this computer. You can also just email it to yourself and then open it from your email. But I'm going to open this with Photoshop and we're using 2023. And maybe your sketch is already finished. You don't need to do much more, but mine is was kind of a speculative sketch. It was guessing what I would be able to find. Now I've got actual references to base it on. So I'll start with the horizontal format. So I'm going to put that over on the side of the screen here. And I'm going to use a tablet just to draw digitally. You do not have to do this. It's actually, I think, better for beginning digital arts students to draw by hand and then kind of understand how that relates to uh, to when we start using the tablets more for direct image making later. All right, so I'm going to move my references off so I can see them. This is like my design board up in my studio. And now I'm just going to use the brush tool. I'm just going to set it to black. And I'm going to choose a brush that is a very standard brush under general brushes this is going to be a pressure sensitive hard round brush so we've never used the tablet like this before where the harder you press the thicker the line can get right but it makes it a lot more like a pen or some or a paintbrush now i'm going to make a new layer on top of this photo and now I can start choosing. In fact, 